And you said at the beginning, like your passion and the, the revelation and how God continued to put moms in, in your line of sight, even things like that occurring, like there's no coincidence in that. We always say hindsight is 2020, but what if we walk into every second of our day, even just like this conversation where it's a forethought, it's a forethought to what God could reveal in that moment. And there's an expectation and a hopefulness and, um, a reliance. You know, you say that the word never changes. He is always going to be there. He's always a step ahead. He's predestined you for good works. But if you're focusing on little G gods versus the God, you're going to go wayward. It's going to be hard for you to get back. And yet he's still waiting for you. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I've, I've learned is there's always more there's, he, he always has more for us. And so, you know, perhaps I can still receive on the surface level, what God wants me to receive in that moment, but there's always more of him that we can uncover. And, um, that process of intentionally studying and understanding and comprehending, and even understanding the different genres, is this history or is this poetry? It helps us understand these different aspects of scripture that just make it so rich and so alive to the point where it starts to change how we live our lives in the day to day. And I know even as a mom, there have been things that I have looked back and I've misunderstood and I've had to go back and reteach my children. And, you know, my daughters are teenagers now and they would say, you know, mom, like I understood this Bible story. I understood what that meant now then. But when you explain it now, this changes my perspective on things. And I think that's been so helpful for me. And that's really my heart to serve other women to kind of just open their eyes to see that there's always more in scripture. There's always more of God. And, and I think that is one of the things that I think is so heartbreaking for me is when women say, Oh, I just don't have time to spend time in God's word. I'm like, but you don't have time not to spend time yes. in God's word. Yes. You know, if we're investing in these little people that God has given us charge over, or even in our circles of influence at work or within our marriages or whatever it is, the people that God has given us to steward, we can't afford not to do this. Yeah. Um, but yet I'm trying to make it in a way that it's accessible and easy for women to kind of grab hold of something that they can pray and meditate on throughout the day. Well, girl, you are doing it and you're doing it with such grace. And I love the element of presenting the women, the six women that you did. I'd love to know which of the six I need to get my hands on this. Um, but there's so many women, even today, this morning, I was something I grazed by so many times. I don't hear taught from the pulpit very often is the story, the parable that happens right before the parable of the talents, which we hear constantly. And it's about the 10 bridesmaids. And I was thinking about all of those women and I was thinking about my own bridesmaids and what exactly was transpiring with the wedding and, and the, the reunion that was happening with the groom at that point. It's so different than what our weddings and our bridesmaids look like. But there was five of those women who were deemed wise, and there was five of those women who were deemed foolish. And you'll have to go check out Matthew 25. I'm not going to give you and go through the whole story here, but Matthew 25, the very first 13 um, verses, and go in and look deeper. Because when I finally looked deeper and I understood more of the context, I initially was like, man, I feel like they're not doing what I would do because God would tell me that I need to be generous. They didn't give away their oil. And because they, they didn't have enough to get through the night of being with the groom, which obviously this is an element of, of being with the Lord. And the other girls who were fools who didn't come prepared, who hadn't put the due diligence in to understand how much oil they were going to need to burn or didn't even maybe have it because they were focused on other things, they missed the party. They missed the opportunity to sit with, with the groom in that moment or Christ in that moment. And I think about how applicable that is for us, but it wasn't the oil. It was like the spiritual well like as much as I love you, Rachel, and as much as I feel like in simpatico, I can't have your spiritual life unless I was, well, there's no unless I can't have what you have. I can't flex that muscle because that's not the time or the energy and how I've put into it. Mine looks different. However, at least we're on the same path. If people understood that like, this is not something you can give away, we can teach, but the intimacy, the revelation that we're talking about has to be yours.